Welcome to CLAS Connections, a mini-cast that spends a heartfelt five minutes with people from UConn's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. In each case, their special connection has had a profound and lasting impact on their lives. Today, we hear from Professor Lisa Eaton and Associate Professor Ryan Watson of the Department of Human Development and Family Sciences. Their personal lives could hardly be more different, but their mentoring connection and shared tough love attitude have led to a close friendship they both treasure. Here's Lisa and Ryan. I have to brace myself for this <laughs> answer. <laughs> what was your first impression of me? I think I remember the first serious interaction we had. We hadn't talked before, but people kept saying, like, Lisa, Lisa, you got to meet Lisa. I came to your office with an idea. So I showed up in the Ryan building. I remember going to that meeting thinking, like, I really respect this person. She is really smart. She's going to help me in my career. I had some ideas about a grant, and I was super naive and did, I knew very little. This was, you know, I was in my 20s. <laughs> late 20s. In my late 20s. <laughs> and I remember I came with an idea, and I'm not painting you out to be mean, <laughs> but you were like, if you're going to do a grant for those reasons, you're going to not be happy in your career. And I was like, this is what I thought I was going to do. I'm not a very emotional person, but I think I had tears in my eyes. And I was like, (laughs) but you were a good mentor because you pivoted me into what is now our mentor-mentee grant, which is a KO one from National Institutes of Health. And it was way better. From it was, tears to triumph. <laughs> it was more in line with what I should have done. Yeah, I just think like life is short. And like when you're 80, 90 years old, God willing, you're not going to look back and be like, oh, I wish I like applied for that application over that. You know, you want to really prioritize happiness, which I think leads to greater productivity in the long run anyways. Do you remember that meeting? I do remember that meeting. You reminded me a lot of myself. Because you had this approach of, I'm looking for people who are either going to help me or they're going to get out of my way. That level of determination is something that's hard to instill in somebody and something that you just showed up with. You know, you're someone who you can set in place and like you'll fly. I wish I could bottle it up and give it to everybody. Lisa's only five years older than me, but I think the trope is like someone older than me can't use computers, you know, the older, the baby boomers or whatever. So sometimes <laughs> Which like I'm I'll, a millennial. I, okay, Just... so am I. But you know, like it comes with that. Lisa's a full professor. I'm an associate professor. There's like, there's that five years is not a lot, but there's a lot that happened in those five years, I think, especially for you. Well, and I'm just tired. And you have two children. You sleep going. like 11 hours. And I sleep a lot of hours. <laughs> Just yesterday, we we're working on a project. We were interpreting something very difficult. It was interpreting adjusted odds ratios via logistic regressions. You need a lot of attention to interpret this. And the worst thing that could ever happen happened. Lisa (laughs) closed the document without saving it. Hours of work. (laughs) You just had to like, I got to go. No, I took care of it. I was like, okay, yeah, I need to go. I just need to get this done. Now it's time to, and I actually did it in like 15 minutes after it took us four hours of sorting it out. I was at a drag queen's birthday party, and it, we were at a bar celebrating the birthday party, and your son had a question for me, and FaceTime me, and my friends gathered around and answered questions for your teenage son. And I'm like, yeah. that is a great example of a how example. a mentor-mentee relationship might operate outside of just, here's how to write a grant. Here's how to publish the paper. You've brought a lot of like enriching joy to my life. I really appreciated when you said earlier that you do feel like I have your best interest in mind because I do feel like I have said things to you that it might have irked you. And I'm like, I'm only saying this because I really feel like it's a bad move and I think that I've annoyed you. And I'm totally at peace with that because that's the right thing to do. I can get very obsessive about everything I write the perfect is the detriment of good, and Ryan will be more like, no, like keep keep things moving. What would describe our relationship is saying, I got to go, and then Lisa will say, no, I have to go. <laughs> like, it's not about you. Like, I'm the one that has something more important to do. And so we'll just battle that out, and then one person will eventually hang up. And I think it's a, a great friendship, and especially mentorship, when you can really just hang up on somebody. You hung up on me today. And I just... was like trying to find a parking spot. <laughs> and I'm literally talking and I look down and it's, it's just your connection. picture. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, that is a great sign of, I mean, we're not doing that because we're mad at each other, but because we're comfortable enough and we talk enough. I want to have the last word and I want to say. <laughs>
I have to go. <laughs> 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 this conversation.